So what do we have today? This is my 2014 Ram 1500 5.7 liter Hemi. Four wheel drive, 392 gears, ZF8 speed. This is a miserable transmission. It's been generally pretty good. It, uh, every now and again though, the shifter gets a little wonky. You'll be just cooking along pretty good and all of a sudden it'll stop going and you look down and the light will be blinking and you'll have to stop and put it in neutral and park and put it back in drive and it'll be fine again. It does that maybe once or twice a month and nobody has any idea what to do with it. But beyond that, it's noted as, I believe, like a lifetime fluid from the factory. Bull. I don't care what you're doing. If you have a fluid that is doing work, it ain't lifetime. Tell BMW how lifetime fluid works when they came out with their 2005 or so generation of the R12 GSs with that rear end that blew up every 30 seconds. Hell, even mine leaked, although I knew it was coming, and as soon as I caught it, I took it to the shop and they put a new seal in it. But uh, BS, lifetime fluid, phooey. Uh, lifetime to a car manufacturer means just so long as I get past my warranty period. So for this truck, that's 100,000 miles. For the uh, drivetrain, let's say, the powertrain warranty, which effectively means anything that has some sort of lubrication, rear end, front end, transmission, engine oil, internal engine stuff, uh, that's powertrain. So this thing now has about 107,000 on it. Really no issues, but I want to keep this truck. When we, I'm finally, I'm waiting for the damn Grand Wagoneer to come out so I can get my wife one of those, and then I'll take this and get rid of old Faithful over there. Or at least, I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, but the Germans, in their infinite engineering wisdom, much like many modern-day BMWs, of course, because guess where they're from, this ZF is a German transmission, and it has no dipstick. It has no way to check the level from the top. You have to go underneath the damn thing and pull a plug while it's running and level and see if it drips. And if it doesn't, you add. And if it does, you let it drip until it stops dripping and then you're done. That's lame. I don't care who you are. If you maintain your own stuff, this should aggravate the hell out of you. But, you know, I got 100,000 miles on this thing. It's about time for a tranny fluid change. Another piece of idiocy with this thing is the filter. Most people will buy a $30 filter, take the pan down and slap it in, put the pan back on. Well, again, the Germans integrated the filter into the pan. So you can get a knockoff pan for about a hundred bucks. I figured I'd go with the correct one made in Germany just because I don't figure I'll do it again for another five or six years. Got the magnets in it and everything, that's kind of nice. Um, but you have to change the bloody pan to change the filter. So that's $145, $150. Probably $250 if you did it at the shop at a Chrysler dealer. And of course, ye olde special ZF Lifeguard fluid which I was able to source online for about $20, $22 a quart. I've got eight quarts in here. The Dodge dealer, for whatever their version of this stuff is, it's about $40 to $45 a quart. So you figure a $230 pan and maybe seven, eight quarts of fluid, and you are looking, plus labor, probably at $1,000 at the dealer to do this service that I am going to attempt. So... Holy smoke. Um, sure, it's lifetime. If you're going to trade it in in a year or two, yeah, drive it. Pour, pour, let, the pour, let the next poor sucker be the one that has a transmission fall out of it. But uh, for me, that's not quite going to work. So now we're going to just go downstairs a little bit and show you some of the quick engineering I had to do to make it so I could actually get to this thing. Let's check out my new light. See if it's any good. Uh, that's not too bad. Okay. So, here's 
transmission pan, transmission, and here is where you check the level. That is a six millimeter Allen or six millimeter hex key, and it came out pretty good. Always check your drain plug before you pull, I mean, always check your fill plug before you pull your drain, because if you can't get the fill plug out and you drain it, you have a problem. Now, as I said, that pan has a drain in it, and it is right there. Good spot for it. Great spot for it. Except for Dodge putting the damn exhaust right under it, so you can't get your 10 millimeter hex that you need in there. So what I have done is I had a 10 millimeter socket. So I knocked the extension out of that, ground it off, and now I can get that up in there, pop that drain without breaking it, and instead of just having to use the pan to take it down, I can actually try to use the drain plug, even though it's going to get all over the exhaust and probably go all everywhere anyway. Not much to that. But then the fun part of this thing is the transmission needs to be level when you're doing the fill process. So that's this here. And it's not easy to get that level because of the way Dodge installed this thing so far nose down. So that's why I've got the back end jack so far up. This is about as high as I can get it to get close to level. So when I check this, it's correct. Anyway, we're going to get set up and that's what we're going to try to do. All right, something else I've done since I'm not 100% sure on this thing and you'll never know if you ever got it quite right unless you're perfectly level, which is almost impossible, is got me a three gallon container just measured it with some water so i got four five six and seven quart levels marked i'm going to do my best to catch all of the fluid that comes out of this disaster and uh, then at least i'll have some idea of approximately what i need to get in there so if i get within half a quarter of it i'll probably be all right but i'll know that if i'm a quart lower than this or you know if i get out a quart more than I'm able to put in, I'll know I gotta keep going, something's not right. So we're gonna try to get this set up where you can see something and go from there. Okay, we'll crack this. And this is a weird thing, because it's got a, it's built with some locks, which you'll hear clicking along the side of it so that it won't spin out. Again, I'm sure this is this is actually pretty easy if this stupid exhaust pipe were here. And it's got a gasket in it and a couple of other things if you look at the way the new pan is constructed, but I'm sure I'm about to make a mess. Hopefully I can get most of it in the bucket. Yep, there it comes. Oh, man. Thank you, Chrysler. Making me long for working on my Ford. I want to see in my car black ones aren't what I want to see yeehaw and that's not even with the drain with the fill plug open 
That is disgusting. Lifetime my butt. But, I have to say the exhaust tubing is doing a fine job in generally directing it into my bucket. And then we got four quarts. Pop the fill plug out of here, see if we can get it to breathe, if it needs any. So we're just gonna let that drain for a while. Well, I go clean up a little bit. Okay, so it's been I don't know, about another five or ten minutes. She's down to a slow bleed. Of course, I dropped the plug into the pan. Now, start cracking these pan bolts loose. And these are T40 Torx. I guess it's pretty good, because... People probably have access to one of those. And the nice thing is these are set up such that you can't over torque them because there are metal inserts in it. So you just torque it to the limit of the insert. And that's as much as you're going to get. Yes, that's it. Suppose if I had a speed gun. That's one of the other nice things about this pan kit is it came with all new fasteners including a new transmission drain plug not just the gasket which is kind of nice. Now my concern is <laughs> that this pan won't come off over the exhaust. I'm hoping it's not quite that stupid. But again, this is a German transmission cobbled into an American car so honestly nothing will surprise me We are right at about the five quart mark. 
so far, barring what else comes out with the pan. Yeah, that was close. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> of course. I just noticed there's one fastener that is dead above the exhaust. I'm gonna have to see if I can get that from the other side. Nope. Let's see, I may, may have to get creative with this one too. Goody. Good, just enough room to get a hex key Torx key in there. Just enough room, but barely. This is what happens when you don't have a plan. But at least it'll come out. I guess I'll see if I can do it from this side. Okay. As you can see, she's still dripping. goo all right well I'll give him a little credit for that it did come out without having to take the exhaust off but still stupid so we're gonna let that drain some more and then we'll check it out up top okay so i would say we are four five just right at about five quarts that has come out of that including the goo that i poured out of the pan and uh looking at it those are the magnets and for 108,000 miles, I'd say those look pretty good. Really not a lot of buildup in the bottom of this system at all. At all. Shoo, B. Um, so, as far as that goes, I think she's in pretty good condition mechanically. And now we just got to go through the faff of getting this thing back on and then getting all of this five quarts of this garbage back in which really ought to be entertaining so 
we're gonna get set up we're gonna try to level out the transmission as best we can and then we are going to get set up and start putting it all back together <laughs> 